this is the section that's going to take us into talking about the importance of being customer focused and product focused. Somebody mentioned this in our last session where their quality of product is what they're saying is selling their, is their selling point. Let's look at the two aspects of it. If you are a product centric person as opposed to a customer centric person or business. If you're product centric, you're always focused on making the best product, which is something we should be focused on anyway. We don't want to do shoddy work. We don't want to have um, things that are ripping apart or things that, you know, I've gotten outfits already. And as soon as I've gotten home and worn it once, the hems ripped out, I had to hem them by myself, well, all over again. And that was kind of irritating. So, you know, is your product the best? Is your focus always about finding the newest products? You know, are we the ones who always want to be the new kid on the block? So right now everybody's into masks. Are you the one that wants to make this product where there's a mask and there's a shield apart with it, or there's a cup with a shield and a mask and I, I don't know, um, something that, that is the newest product out there. Are you always looking for something new? You, do you like make something and then you always go on to something new? Is that your strategy? Or are you instead thinking about customer being customer focused? Are you looking at creating the best responses for your customer? Are you looking at, you know, supplying their needs, meeting them where they, you know, filling their needs? Are you offering them solutions? Are you doing the same things perhaps in a different way? Are you treating all your customer groups or are there some customers that you turn away? The reality is the best business strategies incorporate both of these streams. What tends to happen, however, is that persons who are focused solely on the product, the hustle, such as it were, may not see the benefit in also keeping their customer base close or keeping their customers happy. Remember, we spoke just now about boundaries and when we behave a certain way, that's the type of customer we will also attract. If you're always looking for the next best thing, maybe your customer will also be looking for the next best thing, which may not be you. But we've seen as well where the return business is based upon the relationship you've, you've built with these customers. And that can only be achieved through having a customer focused culture, right? There's nothing wrong with incorporating new products, but if that's all you're chasing after all the time, then, you know, you're losing out a lot. All right, let's see. How many of you are active on social media? How many of you during this last, let's say last six weeks, I'm saying six weeks, I know it's been closer to about two months. How many of you for the last six weeks have been posting a little bit more on your social media? Have been probably finding that you have become a little more creative in the way that you're promoting to your publics. When was the last time any of you looked at your social media um, with like from through the eyes of a customer? Is all the contact information on your site current? Is the cell number that you have there, the email address, the WhatsApp number, are all of those current? Can people reach you through those methods? Do you want them to reach you through all those methods? How is Facebook Messenger treating you? I've been having some issues with that recently. Have you realized that there have been issues with that app? For those of us who have websites, are you cleaning it up? Are you making sure it's current? Do you have old events there, old activities, is the brand that you used to be no longer who you are? Have you done a social media audit? Who is the person that's responding to your Facebook comments? Who? And does your customer know how they can purchase your product? 
I get so irritated when I go onto a website, be it an Instagram post, a, a website, a Facebook post, and I have no idea how I can order this product and how it's going to get to me. How? A social media audit. There are many sites online that can tell you how to do this, but what it basically means is that you look at all of your social media platforms and you see what is the message that you're giving people. What is the story you're giving people? You look and you see, is there any information there that you need to update, information you need to get rid of, information that is no longer relevant, queries that you perhaps were tardy in responding to, and streamline all of those things across your platforms. Everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon of the newest thing. I know that we're all, some of us are bored and we're jumping on the TikTok wagon. I wouldn't say show of hands, but do we have any guilty people here? Any TikTok, any TikTokers out here? I've heard the word, but I have not paid attention to what exactly it is about. Very good, no problem. Um, um, Anybody else? This might be further explored when you guys do your marketing session, but my take is that we don't have to be on every single medium or just because it's the newest thing on the block, it, may, it doesn't necessarily mean it will fit with your brand or what, is, what the message is that you're sending out there. Right, so take this time guys to reassess your online presence. All of this is a part of customer service. You are telling people what to expect when they interact with you. If you have poor spelling, poor grammar, you're tardy in responding to messages, queries, etc., then you're telling them a story as well. Yes, too busy for that, not let it help in your business, not interested, not a problem. Can anybody unscramble this message for me? Can anybody unscramble it for me? No takers. Hi, I'll try. Okay, so you have only one chance to make a well, I said, I will say great first expression or a first impression. So you have only one chance to make a first impression. Wonderful. And she's right. Thank you, Janelle. You have only one chance to make a first impression. The first impression somebody has of you, that's it. You can't change their mind. Are we ready to see some scary things? What are we seeing here? What are we seeing here, guys? What's going on here? This is an empty water bottle. I have no idea what this is. I think that's thread. We see this order. Hot mess. Do you guys know that there are people that are allergic to pet hair and, uh, well, or, okay, there are people who are allergic to many allergens, and you know that fabric has a lot of allergens in it. Are you aware of that? I'm sure some of you often find yourselves sneezing when you deal with certain fabrics and certain materials. Um, and then again, we have all the Sahara dust to deal with. So certain materials will trap those things, and that will also uh, be in your drapes or wherever the dust lies. What's going on here? Not as bad as the first one, but if a client walks in, and this is the first thing they see, or if you walk into someone's place, and this is the first thing you see, no judgment, guys. I know you will say to me, Ms. Jagannath, you're not a designer, you don't understand, you don't know what it is like, we have to have our things, we are working, is that a showcase I have here? I know you will tell me, Miss, you don't understand me. <laughs> right. But I'm trying to make a point. Yes, we know we are working. Yes, we know this is our space. 
but we have to be vigilant about the messages we are giving to our clients. Um, what's going on here? Look at the flow. Look at the flow. Look at where the tea station is. You guys are seeing this tea station. Look at what's going on here. Look at look. We have a box here. We have a uh, an iron here. <sighs> Are you guys getting a headache? Is anybody else feeling a little bit overwhelmed? Does, any, does somebody want to go join the hoarders? <sighs> I know. So imagine this is something that we're looking at. And it's affecting us mentally. We've, some of us are feeling claustrophobic. Some of us are feeling, oh gosh, we want to go get our garbage bag one time and start a throw away things from my side. That's not even my space. And some of us are feeling like, oh gosh, why, why couldn't they just like, you know, make it a little, you know, you know, at least have a chair for us to sit on. Uh... We're currently renovating the studio, but it's not that bad. Guys, I'm not asking for confessions. Designers, I am not asking for us to judge you. I'm not saying to you that you're doing something wrong. I'm saying to you, be aware of what your first impression is. The people that are coming into your space. Can you find anything here? Can anybody find something here? Or do we think maybe we should try to find a better method to to utilize? <laughs> Amanda says we'll find dust there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the only person that owns it will probably be able to find this one scrap of material here that she knows is there or he knows is there. Um, this is like a, a organized chaos. I know we've heard about organized chaos. So in places where you see somebody has all of this, they say, hey, I can find what I'm looking for, you know. But you know what? Maybe there's a better way to have these things done. Maybe we can have these um, fabrics, uh, fabrics sorted by color. Maybe we can have a different shelving system set up where we can um, sort them vertically, sort them in drawers. It's a trap. Yes, you can actually get damaged in there. And what's going to happen during this COVID-19 or post-COVID-19 when we walk in inside there? What's going to happen to us? Tell me what's going to happen to us. Or what's going to happen to the customer? Working on shelving. She's probably got he or she's probably gonna walk right back out. I understand that we are all trying to improve ourselves. We're all trying to reach from point A to point B. I understand that there are many setbacks because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Maybe some of us were going to invest in a secondary space and now we have to divert that money back into something, a survival. Um, but I'm saying that the reality is we have to make some decisions. Not everybody's going to understand that you are doing the best you can. As Amanda's pointing out, it's somebody with best intentions but it went wrong along the way. So how can we probably make it look a little more like this? How do we feel when we see this? How are we feeling? I feel calm. I feel calm. Yeah, Kavira, I feel calm. I don't feel as flustered. I mean, yes, we see stacks of fabric. Maybe they have them sorted by type. It looks nice. They use shelving the same way that uh, Renee was saying she's going to incorporate. Storage solutions and organization solutions are things that you need to figure out for yourself. What will work for you? There are hundreds of YouTube videos all over. Um, so for those of us who are more visual, 
just like a regular organizing videos. I mean, some of the things that you can incorporate in your business or your home or your general life might surprise you. I've seen people reuse things like not just the paper towel rolls, but actual napkin holders to mount shelves. So give it a shot. What are we seeing here? Doesn't this look like a showcase? <sighs> Yum. <laughs> what are we thinking when we look here now? Someone who sews casually. I understand, I understand the concern. As I started off by saying, you would probably say to me, Miss Jagannath, you don't understand when we are producing pieces, fabric will be flying all over. But I will say to you, is there anything you can do to improve that? Can you sweep between clients? Can you make sure that on the days that you're cutting and having a little more mess, you don't have people around or you hire someone in to help you clean up in these days of social distancing? You're going to have to be aware of how that is going to be done, right? Clean every night and, re and reset. Yeah. Remember we said you have only one chance to make a good first impression. And that is impacted by the appearance of everything, your behavior, your attitude, your availability. How many senses do we have? We have five senses. When we walk into a space that has the cat, what's the smell going to be like? Let's talk again about crunch time, producing Monday wear pieces. And we eat in KFC two, three, four times through the day. And we forget to throw out the KFC. And we leave it in a box or in a corner or at the kitchen station, what's that place gonna smell like? Are any of us guilty, guilty of this? Do we know anybody who's guilty of this? I'm not gonna ask you specifically. Do we know anybody who's guilty of this? Have used coffee cups all over with dregs in it, flies having a little, uh, you know, party. Your drafting space is allowed to be a work functional, but your waiting area and storage area are always intact. If your things are organized, then you do not need to be digging through to make a mess to replace stuff. You don't want customers in your workspace. The idea here is that we need to be aware of these things. The purpose of this workshop, I'm not even calling it a webinar because you guys are working as well. The purpose of this workshop is to bring to your attention certain things that you might take for granted that is supposed to impact on your customer service. What does your customer see when they come in? Um, when they park outside or if they're taking uh, public transport, are there like bags of garbage along the side of the road in front of your space? Is there uh, a dog has left evidence at your workspace in the front before, before the person comes in? Um, do you have neighbors next door that are playing all sorts of loud games or music? Is the music that you have in your workspace, do you have music? Do you want to have music? I know these days or like during um, uh, the hurricane season, we tend to have the radio on a little bit more so that we can make sure we know what's going on and outside there. What is the volume that you have that music on? Are you playing gospel music? Are you playing heavy metal? Are you playing soca? What kind of clientele are you attracting with the kind of music that you're playing? I am not telling you one or the other is wrong. I am saying to you, be aware that this also impacts on your customer base. Right? So we talked about what they see. We talked about what they hear. We talked about what they smell. Your, your, yes, your mood is affected by music. What about touching? Somebody hi. Is, um, yes, hi. Hi. Yeah, hi. Go ahead. I went to, uh, well, I'll call it a workshop already about this, which I think it was, if I remember, I can't remember his name, but I think we had a class with him recently. And he was telling us about our story. 
Like if you have a business story, like all the, the music and stuff that you that you play in your workspace and stuff should tie into your story. So like if you have a certain personality trait that you attach to your business, that should also play into the things that people will hear, see, and smell around your business. Very good, yeah, because it, customer service is a major part of marketing. And what you've just spoken about, the brand story, is marketing. So thank you so much for sharing. I see here Kavir is pointing out that we can have some added value provided to customers during these times, providing things like, you know, to ease them, give them a little bit of comfort, or bearing in mind that just like we had the exercise earlier this morning where there's a lot of noise, where two people are speaking at the same time, Think about the volume that you have the music being played. Thanks again, Crystal. That's okay. So two things that we didn't cover, touch and taste. When they come into your workspace, now, as I was mentioning just now, we're all hyper vigilant because of this COVID-19 and, you know, super sanitizing, being super hygienic being a little paranoid in some cases. We're, I mean, rightfully so, we're allowed to be scared until we figure out how this is gonna happen. We, we have the right to protect ourselves and our families, okay? So touching, mm, think about how you're gonna treat with when customers come and if you have some touchy, touchy customers, those who like to touch up other clients' uh, pieces, those who like to touch um, fabric, those who like to go into your private um, uh, magazine area, Anything that you may have that, uh, you know, maybe you don't want them touching anymore, you generally don't like to be touched. So, you know, maybe think about how you're going to hide away those things because you don't want to be rude when you're telling people about it. I'm not sure if taste is really impacting so much here because I don't think many of you, I could be wrong. Do any of you allow eating or drinking on your premises or in your workspace? Hi. Hi, go ahead. Albert, yeah. Um, for me, my I have a petition that separates my workplace from the reception area. Excellent. So when, so that's what we're looking when, at. Cost, when customers come in, the only thing they're seeing is the reception area where their items are being displayed right. and the wash room. Okay. Wonderful. So therefore, they are not coming into the work environment area because in some days, it's chaotic. Mm -hmm. Like now, I am still working while I should, and while I am still working, I don't have staff, but I am still working. And so I am understandable. In, I am indoors, I alone, yeah. I am not interacting with anybody, so I, I am know that I am I could continue. But there's okay. some days the place is really messy. Mm -hmm. And so, so that is why. Where, you understand where I was coming from that, I realistically speaking, I understand when you're working, there will be mess, but uh, you need to be aware of what vi your visuals are for your customers so you understand where I'm coming from. Yes, correct. So that is why I custom customers stay in front and they are not allowed beyond a certain point. Wonderful. Unless they're invited to. Thank you so much for sharing. Guys. The quality uh, of service that you're uh, oh, we have a question. Go ahead. Is that Kavir? I just wanted to add um, when, for example, when I did um, a pop up at, at what's the name of it, the cottage a few weeks ago, yeah, so a few months ago, um, I made uh, banana bread, which is very welcome, and the, the store owner allowed it to, to happen mm. and. Um, people really enjoyed it, you know, they, they shopped and um, they, they got, they... so I think it, it adds to your experience when I do um, studio sales at home here, I always yeah. make, I always make sure that there is something, you know, special to drink and not um, uh, alcohol, but something like, you know, really nice fruit juice, I would do uh, watermelon juice. Um, I've had that well, experience before in some places I've gone and I, you, you I, used I, up a good word that, there just now. You said experience. What you did is that you created an experience for them. Right. Some of some of my students have, have landed up like um, 
I get like limes, you know, well, lime a little bit, but they, mm -hmm. there would be, there would definitely be, you know, just two or three things, snacks to eat, and something, mm -hmm. and a few options for drinks. And mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's really important. Now, why this will work, designers, for Kabir's situation is the type of pieces that he pre he provides. People are coming to appreciate what he has on display. I'm assuming it's your art pieces, Kabir. It it will be no, it will be my my paintings um, and my clothes. Do you um, have a piece you can share with us at the moment? Is there anything specifically you're working on now, or something you're particularly proud of you'd like to show us at the moment? And while it, Kavir is probably answering me, I want somebody else from the group that I know you all have gotten the email now to please show me one of your packaging, your packaging or a box <laughs> or your bag. So Kavir, will, are you willing to share something with me? Sorry, I was just laughing. Not Lush, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, Lush. Uh, we love Kavir. <laughs> so I'm not sure what you are. You asking about? Work do you have I'm anything working. that you yeah do you have anything that you have close by a piece that you're proud of a piece you're working on um, anything at all any format that you want to share with us today i haven't been really doing a lot of actual work but there's... anything from the past is fine all right um i, I don't know you. yeah <laughs> so it's just a i'm trying to organize that it's just a painting that i've been working on oh I, wonderful I what you're able to to see but um yeah that's yeah. that's um i haven't uh i haven't been doing a lot of, of work that's fine we all know this is something that we have to process yeah i personally have had a lot of ideas that i might have wanted to engage in during this period and Honestly, sometimes you're so stressed, worried about pretty much the same things you guys mentioned before, that it's okay. Forgive yourself and let's move on. Kavir is very lovely. I like that. Is anybody else going to show me some of their packaging? Did anybody see that painting that Kavir showed us there? Is anybody else going to share their packaging or something they want to show us? Is there anything anybody wants to show us? Because I'm pretty sure by now we would have realized that this is a show and tell. A show and tell. Hi, I hear someone unmuting their microphone. Who is it? Kiran, Kiran, hi Kiran, I remember you. Show me a piece. I see Shanika. Let's see. So I see that someone's talking, but I'm not hearing them. Okay, hi, Miss. Hi. Oh, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Kira. Let's hi. hear you. <laughs> right. Um, you want to see? I'll, I'll show you one of my pieces. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'll put the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Is anybody, is everybody else getting to see this when this comes on? I'm not sure about this particular program. Do the rest of you get to see what was being shown to me? No visibility. No visibility. All right. So Lisa, we'll look at that. All right. Let's see. Here I am. Come on. I'm not seeing you yet. I'm hearing you, but I'm seeing your video. You're not seeing me? Okay. What can I, I do? I press share or let it share? Just show us. Your, ah. Right. Hey, you see me? I see you. I remember you, you know. I remember you. You didn't give me so much trouble. <laughs> I know, I know. So yes. you see how <laughs> I, I love how, the class. I had to step I love the class. Oh, yeah, you I the guy who wants to come back. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so see there's one of my pieces. Aye, aye, aye. That's what we're I talking about. I like, I like the two tone. Uh, right, so the, yes, we can't see the pattern too clearly, but I recognize that there's, is it what is it? A uh, hound's tooth or, or some, some sort of pattern? What is it? It's um a tribal print. Okay, it looks right? lovely. Yeah, see I see it. I see it now, yeah. 
I start look, look the logo on hand here and stuff. Let me see if I can get the camera to. Uh, yeah, I'm fighting okay. up with the camera. I don't know how to use it exactly. You see the logo on it? Yeah, I saw it just now. Are we and seeing this one this I battle? I got some advice just now about minimizing my screen. Are we seeing this battle? Thank you, Lashona. I like this. I yeah, like thanks, Miss. Thank you. Is anybody else wanting to share with us today? Welcome back again, Kira. Yes, thanks, Miss. <laughs> Kira, before you go, I yeah. wanted to ask something. Um, are you? I know that you were a part of this class last year, and I'm covering similar material. Are you recognizing that I've changed and updated it for for you this year? Are you realizing that there are some changes? No, well, um, this, this is what I wanted to tell you. I was out for half of the class, like I uh, got okay, the no, first okay, hour, and then <laughs> yeah. I had to go out. Yes. Okay, no problem. Oh, but Sarah, it's a very yes. important class right now. Wonderful. So, Sarah, you agree yes, I've been updating it. It's very different from last year. We're still covering the same material, but what I've done is I've updated it for this environment, the virtual environment. And still trying to keep it interactive. Thank you, Kieran. Is there anybody else who would like to share with us? Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anything anybody wants to share with us? It doesn't have to be a piece that you're working on. It can be something that is moving you right now. Hello. No? Hello. Hi. Hello. Oh Lord. <laughs> we'll we'll Hi. talk to you just now. Let's show now. Go ahead. I'm trying to show you my studs, but I'm seeing it, but I'm not sure if you are. Uh, see if you can share your camera, because I'm not seeing your camera. I did. It's it's green. The camera is green. Oh, no, we're not seeing you. That's okay. The technical difficulties are something that we're all having some challenges with. Oh, yeah, right. Wow. What am I looking at here? I said wow, yeah, but wow. What am I looking this at here? Is, this is my packaging. Wow, wow. Individual mask. Uh -huh. And this is like if they do like a custom order with right. the Mother's Day creation kind of thing. Oh, so you and liked what I was I suggesting. Have... You liked what I was suggesting about doing the Mother's Day packages. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I've been doing it since the beginning of the week. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like kids packaging. Oh, how cute. <laughs> yeah. Bye, and local, guys. Bye, local. This is like the newest addition to the line. Oh, matching all um, slippers and all of that. Yeah. You can get like mask, headband, matching combination. Yeah. And including the water bottles with I'm impressed. But I still I still like my wine glass up but um I like your water bottle. So, I still like mine. <laughs> I haven't reached wine glasses yet. No no and that's this fine. is that's fine. <laughs> and this is my little what I call a Kobe kit. Uh-huh. What what is in the Kobe kit? I'm just opening it. It yeah it's like you know, purchases. Right. They get like a sanitizer uh-huh um, kept um mixed here uh, oh, that plus, I, I think lotion. that's what you take out there a lotion some gloves oh, right and i see masks and it's in a kit like easy travel kit kind of thing i like this i really really like this thank you so much for sharing with us designers yeah, designers you understand what's going on here. We are all being forced to evolve. And exactly what what um what was shared with us, what Kimberly has shared with us just now, is exactly the way that the customers are thinking. You have to put yourself into the mindset of what the customer is thinking. And right now they're thinking sanitize, safety, hygiene, right? We do not have to do the exact same thing as somebody else. We can learn from each other, and that is why we're here. And I, I thank you very much, Kimberly, for, for risking sharing that with us. I'm very proud of you, and I don't even know you, but, <laughs> you know, thank you so much. 
right? So this this takes us on to another another level. The purpose of this exercise was for you to see that we have to show this the the clients what's going on, right? We have to show them that we are looking after their safety. We have to show them that even before COVID, we cared about how things were being packaged and given to you. Are any of us guilty of just finding a random supermarket bag and shoving an outfit in it first for somebody? Are any of us guilty of this? I think I feel like people watching a little shame face. Never. Shauna, did you want to share something with us just now? You have bags. Go right ahead. Kiran, I'm feeling shame. This is the second year going through this with me, and you're still using a supermarket bag, Kiran. Kiran, I, I feel as though I've failed you. Somebody is going, is, is Kimberly, I think you need to mute. Um, and I believe the Shauna was going to show us something. Kiran. I'm upset with you. <laughs> Lashona, where are your bags? I'm here, but I think I someone else is on. Hang on a second. Huh? One second. Let me just exit the screen. All right. We're not seeing you. We're seeing you. We're seeing Lashona, but we're not seeing what you want to show us. I don't know why it's doing that, but uh. I am. Um, my screen is marked. No screen or camera are being shared. Ooh, so I am not seeing anything other than customer service and excellence. What? All I am seeing is excellence in, in um, what is being advertised. And I've not seen anything. I don't see no screen or camera has been available. So we're having a little bit of technical issues here. Let's try this again. Escape. Um, okay, Lashana, can you try to show us again? I'm seeing Albert at the top. You're hearing me? Yes. And seeing me. Great. Uh, I don't know how to flip the camera, but it should be flipped now. One second. Oh, right. There you are. But I'm not seeing you. Uh, one second. Okay. Are we seeing her now? Okay, good. So people are I'm seeing not, you. Hi, Shona. Hello. I'm not. <laughs> I am not seeing anything. Oh, so no. Is, my cute little workstation, obviously the lighting isn't allowing me. So this mm -hmm. is where we start. I have plants, like I tell you, I have plants in my workstation. One second, right. Lashona. Um, mm -hmm. the, so the person's on the phone. I think they're having some issues. Who has active cameras on the top? Uh... All right, so, all right, but continue for now because I, I think these challenges are things that we have to learn as we go along. Go ahead. Yeah, Um. the light comes in facing me, so that's why when it's like that, you'll see me clearly, but yeah. so this is the workstation. Uh -huh. right? like my workstation is sacred. Nobody touches anything, places anything on it. Nobody I feel the same way. I feel the same way. <laughs> so I start on this end and I finish on this end, right? So I have so like have these Mm -hmm. I have a flu. So I have job mm -hmm. cards. I write them. They go in this file. Then mm -hmm. I move through here, grab whatever beads and stuff that I need to get. 
right? Cute mm -hmm. little plant again, just to keep the root space nice. Mm -hmm. And then I finish off in here. So you're seeing it properly. Oh, that's the lighting box to take the photos. Yes. And okay, then I go into here and I take pictures. And like I said, I have finished packages. So these are the little organza bags. Yeah. Right. And I put them in here and mm. with name and everything. When it is I have to ship them off, I get the TT Post um track packs. Track packs. Yeah. I get the TT Post track packs and I send everything off. So wonderful. And I don't ever use like plastic bags or anything. When it is I have to put them in bigger bags, I yeah. get uh, I have bags itself. So I put them in those. And this is my cute little final product. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm more into like jewelry and crafts and I, stuff. I actually keep some of my pieces, like my bracelets and stuff, in, in bags like that. Yes, and that's yeah, why it's easy to see. Time. Yes, mm -hmm. and it prevents it from rotting and stuff like that. So, you know, it's really good for storage. Yeah. So, yeah. That's my Wonderful. cute little Harry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so sorry that some of us are having some challenges with um with the screen. So let's see if I can share my screen again. And Albert, I hope you get back to see what I'm showing you. I really hope so. So that was are you seeing yes, I'm seeing I'm seeing your screen, but I'm not seeing the person so sharing. All right, so I have a feeling that that is a challenge with the app. So let's continue with the, with this then. All right. Basically, guys, customer service is everywhere all the time. You're always going to be on. When you're not even checking your social media, online conversations are going on without you. How many of us look at um, different pages, like uh, other people's pages, not necessarily our competitors, but other products and, and services that we follow? And we see some sorts of conversations that are going on. We see some sorts of responses that we're like, hmm, it's funny. But think about if you had to do the same thing, right? Um, let's take an example here. This is an old example that I used where somebody was complaining to courts that they've been trying to get on and they haven't been able to do so. They haven't gotten anyone. It's only after court some saw this message that they decided to reply. And that was, we don't even know how long after. Are you going to be guilty of that? Are you going to be accused of not being available? Are you going to see people putting you up on blast all over? Don't buy anything by Kabir because you can't find them when you want them. Whatever, whatever. Just checking if you're awake in Kabir. What about this rude response? And don't tell me it's because we're Trinisa. Somebody says here, because <laughs> you're sleeping. Somebody said here, now if you clicked on the original post, you would have seen the person's photo. You know, as Trinis, we go straight to the comments. We don't open the, the links. We don't open the article. We don't read nothing. We jump in and we're going to put our own um, take on it. And here is this person said, put up his picture. I want to see which one is Google. And PMT3 decides to respond because, of course, they're end, at the end of their rope. Put it up where? For adoption? You ain't seen the picture right there? How many of us feel the same way when we put the price of a product or answer a question that has been asked a thousand times? And way down in the post, somebody asks, how much is it? Where's the price? Or how many of us do the same thing? Come on, I know we're guilty of this. We ask the question even though it's already answered. A lot of what I'm saying to you is basically a reminder. Do what you say, what you do, what you say you're gonna do. Respond to your calls, your queries, your WhatsApp. Educate your customers about the products and services I see that Kimberly was showing us Pull out a sanitation kit. Maybe she's also going to tell them about how to remove their masks and that hand washing is better than using sanitizer. 
But if you have no choice, use the sanitizer. You're understanding their problems because this is why you're here. You're here to solve problems. For persons who might have a request for a particular type of dress, perhaps you would have to find a way to tell them that style would not work with you or this material does not do what it is you want it to do. Or I believe that for the type of event that you're speaking of, we need to have your shoulders covered or your head covered or you know something if it's a religious event. Um, and make sure that if you have any changes in your policies and procedures, that everybody who works with you is aware of it. Do we have a policy for taking down payments and for receiving payments from customers before you start a job? Do you guys have those sorts of things? I don't even want Kiran to say he was yes. going to do it and he didn't do it. Albert, is that you? You have a policy? Yes, I am. Yes, I have. Um, wasn't in the beginning, but yes, I was forced to um, introduce that um, along the way. Right. Now, guys. A policy doesn't have to be a long, wordy thing. It can just be a matter of saying no jobs are started without down payments. Full payment is expected before the piece is completed. You will be expected to try on two for two sessions before wedding dresses take longer. Customize it to your specific at, um, clientele and customize it to your specific product, right? You can just use some nice paper, you know, in a nice sheet. You can handwrite it. You can type it out. And you don't have to get it laminated. You can use one of these sheet protectors so you can change it as it evolves. Now we're going to have to create policies regarding how customers are going to be treated when they enter our workspaces post COVID 19. So your activity is that you have to now develop your own customer service policies, your payment policies. They don't have to all be separate. You can decide for yourself what is important to you, determine what is going on in terms of the type of clients that, are keep, that keep coming to you, what are the problems you're having and how do you circumvent it. One example is that the, there's a lady I used to go to to do my nails. I saw she put up on the wall, please monitor your children. Um, no opening of nail polish, no um, testing of nail polish. And that is for hygiene reasons, because we know we have people who fast and out of place. Come on, be real. I wish I could hear you all laughing, but I know you are. Fast and out of place. Determine what policies you need to put in place so that you can create those boundaries between you and your clients and still make sure that we are all on the same page. Are we clear? So does somebody want to remind me why we need to put customers first? Anybody? Anybody wants to remind me why? Some of you can put your responses in the chat. I'll, I'll, I'll see them and read them aloud. Customers are the ones paying you. No customers, no pay. Right. And what about, I, I think I was supposed to touch on this and I skipped over it. I want to ask you guys, how do you feel about voice notes? Leaving voice notes and receiving voice notes. How do we feel about that? Does anybody want to share with me what they think about voice notes? You know what? I want to ask one of the organizers if they have an opinion on this. Does somebody from Fashion TT want to give me a response on how they feel about voice notes? Because I've heard from designers previously. But I want to hear from the organizers. What do they think personally about giving and receiving voices? Does anybody want to want to come on and, and, and share that with me? Could you share a little? Could you be a little bit more specific in terms of what you mean by receiving use, or sharing? Use of a voice note as a communication method. Use of voice notes as the only communication method or as a major communication method. I see some people saying that. They're cool with voice notes, they like them, they're more personal than a text. Okay. Have any of you had a bad experience with voice notes? I see someone saying here that they don't mind as long as they have a relationship with the customer. Albert, 
did you have something specifically you were querying regarding the voice notes? You saw no, no, I just wanted, no, I just wanted to know from what perspective you were coming from, okay. because in terms of me... It's a bit for communication, but go ahead. All right, for me, I don't... Um, I think just as if you can make a voice note, you can make a phone call. That's my, my opinion. I like you. I like you. But because I am very same, passionate about this. I want to hear what I, everybody else has to say. Because I believe um interaction, sometimes you could miss what somebody's saying in terms of communication. Remember and earlier so, we were showing a slide and we said in terms of communication, only 7% of the words? Yes, so that is why I prefer to leave. I prefer to speak directly in the past. I would have left messages, person didn't read it, person didn't pay attention, the phone Maybe wasn't working, they never saw it. Maybe they didn't have so, data, yeah. In my case, I prefer to hear the person's voice directly to know, to be clear on what is happening because of past experience. Sandra um, on Design said that in that case, you can also respond at the same time. It's better to do it as a phone call. And I agree. Guys, come on, we have all this technology. What about a face-to-face -face interaction? What about doing a video call? What about doing a Skype call, a, a Facebook call, a WhatsApp call? That way you can read body language. You, you can know if your customers, you know, if you are lying to your customer, you can come across a little more genuine to your customer. I will tell you what I think about voice notes too. I remember earlier we were seeing that for a message to be delivered, you have to have a sender and a receiver, right? In order for that process to work well, you won't know if your receiver has received the correct message unless they relay something back to you. It's supposed to be two-way, right? Um, now with COVID, we're saying that we really may not be able to do the face-to-face -face interactions. Ideally, school of thought is that face-to-face -face is the best way to deliver certain types of news, be it um, you know, good news or bad news. I mean, don't you feel better when somebody comes up to you and says, happy birthday? You know, they come up directly to you rather than you just see a text or somebody copy and paste something or just put up a Facebook suggest to you, well, this is so-and-so's birthday today. You know, you don't even put an effort into it, right? I don't like voice notes. That's my opinion. That's my feeling. It is my duty to draw to your attention what are the hazards of the voice notes and then up to you to decide how you're going to continue. The voice notes, as Albert was just pointing out to us, are one way. When you get that information, you don't know, well, you don't know if the person gets the information. In my mind, and this is what upsets me, if somebody leaves me a voice note, I don't think they want to talk to me. I think they're avoiding me. I think that maybe they're, they're doing the cowardly thing. It's kind of like ghosting, you know, where the person that you were supposed to meet didn't turn up or they just stopped calling you all together and you realize they got blocked on WhatsApp or Instagram or whatever. Come on, I know you all. <laughs> right? To me, a voice note comes across the saying, well, um, Ms. Dragonaut, um, we can't um, finish your piece today. Um, goodbye. And then that's it. No conversation, no discussion because you know I'm going to be upset. So you have taken the, the cowardly way out where we could have spoken to each other directly and reached a better resolution. I'm hearing a mic open. Who are we speaking hi. to? Hi, it's me, Sabrina, again. <laughs> hi, Sabrina. Hi, hi. Um, with the, the, voice, the voice notes, how this works on me with my business, because most of my clients are abroad or foreigners, um, you know, that different lifestyle with the hustle and bustle, mm -hmm. and, you know, they not some people... Um, may not have access to their phones when you may need to talk to them or to find out some information. Um, this is where voice note for me plays a very vital role. Um, mm -hmm. I can leave a voice note and I know that, okay, my because of, again, knowing my clients, I would right. know, yeah, right, um, Jennifer is working so-and-so time, but I need to get this information to Jennifer. And she, I know she will respond to me at a particular time etc right. etc also what the voice mm -hmm. note does is sometimes mm -hmm. we may have certain things that we need to explain that may be a little technical mm -hmm. and maybe at the time you might be busy that you mm -hmm. don't want to type or you can't call mm -hmm. um because sometimes what happens when you call mm -hmm. um things are forgotten okay 
Um, so it's a good way if in the event you were to say, okay, Jennifer, um, unfortunately, we can't use this fabric. Okay. Uh, we tried it before, blah, 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 blah. Uh, she now knows that that information has been, or you know, or you have information there that this person has received or potentially would receive that information. Right. So you could go back and say, yeah, Jennifer, but I sent you a message. Check it out now. Let me resend you the message. Let you me, know, so let, you... Me, <laughs> let me ask you a question, though. You would have only done this because both parties would have agreed. You've seen that it's working right and you understand your clients and you understand their needs and more importantly your purpose for your voice note is information and not that you're ducking her oh yes 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 more for information right? purposes and so like, you know. although um lashon is saying to me the face-to-face -face would have caused her a long time thing it depends on what the individual's experience has been in the past or Again, remember, everything is related to how we interact with our loved ones, our friends, our spouses, our, our church leaders, our bosses. Everything is related there. So whatever experiences you would have had with somebody before, that will impact on whether or not you're receptive to a type of communication going forward. So my feeling for the voice notes is where I've seen irresponsible people utilize it and then disappear. You can't contact them after. They give you a message and then you do what you want with it. And it's not because I personally was not available to do a face-to-face -face or, or a phone call. They just chose to use this method as a cowardly way out. Nadine is pointing out that if used correctly, it can be useful. And what she's saying here, you can use it for confirmation of details. And that is fine. But you have to have the right energy as to why you're doing this. Are you doing this to avoid somebody? Are you doing this to hide? Are you doing this because you found yourself in a situation, your back is against a wall and you don't want to treat with this person right now? Are you doing it because your customer prefers this method of communication? Is it that they will then confirm with you on a timely basis through another communication method that this is um, what is going on? The reason I raised the issue is because we will have different people feeling different ways, but you have to um, adapt it to your particular needs and your particular clientele. Albert, uh, are, you, are you understanding where I'm coming from? Because I pretty much agree with what you were saying earlier. Yes, I am. Because I am thinking as you speak and I'm hearing the kind of comments, that I have one particular customer she uses um voice notes a lot mm -hmm. one um she save on economic wise she save on making a phone call so she would she use wi-fi i have no problem with that at all so she would send messages as soon as something come to mind and dies way that she used that as a means of memory mm -hmm. so something come to mind one time let me save okay. it let me send him a message one time so i have no problems with that it all depends on the individual so you that you're treating with individual right but yes. What about if she was the kind that you're trying to get your money or whatever, and you're only getting her in a voice note after? Yes, I mean, again, it always had to do with the people you're relating to. And, and yes, what some you're people. Yes. What you're Remember, at the end of the day, we what we give out at times, we, we get back. You attract what you are. So you we have an opportunity to. We have an opportunity to set the tone for the relationship. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. can work with a call. I might, I would prefer mm -hmm. to use a phone call because I am hearing you directly. Mm -hmm. um, against if a decision has to be made right away. Mm -hmm. or, oh, um, that's true. A voice note may not be appropriate if you need a decision right away. <laughs> not at all. So for me, I prefer to call than to send a voice note. I will only send a voice note or text if I didn't get you when I call. Thank you. I'm seeing here that Maurice is saying that if the customer keeps interrupting you, maybe you should just send me voice note to explain something. I want to remind us that when we started the lesson, we were all aware, or we were made aware that a customer is never an interruption. Uh, the last session we have today, which will be when you have your little break, a little half hour break, and we come back, we're going to talk about the hard truth, the difficult customers, the different types of customers. We're going to talk about that. 
because it's all well and good to think about being positive and being happy and treating with people when we're in a good mood and having a good customer and we have the back and the forth and all of that and everybody's all happy and in the same place and you know we can sing songs and whatever but that doesn't happen every day yes so we have to be prepared and think about what our triggers are and start to prepare from now how we will treat with these things and you know practice to have that mindset so that when we interact with others in our immediate circle people that we are customers to people that are our customers our internal customers our family members our clients we will know what to do i want to say now the time is 11 55 is it close to 12 are we close to 12 so before I uh, ask us to go on a little break, do we have any questions? Comment. Sure, go ahead. Um, earlier on, I think someone mentioned that um, this most of us should have been home who's non-essential. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we should not have been out to work when we were not essential. Mm -hmm. One of the things business coaches and sessions usually teach us is two words they usually give us. One mm -hmm. is called opportunity. Mm -hmm. And two, the other one is called calculated risk. Okay. And we would usually hear those words in, in sessions like these and business sessions. So while I agree, yes, non-essential should have been home, but then mm -hmm. there are some persons who, this is an opportunity to make right. a calculated risk in terms of providing the mask for those who were unessential. Now, I did a couple. Okay. I did mm -hmm. some. I mm -hmm. didn't went full out because I know others were doing it. But I mean, I had other work doing that kept me occupied. But I'm just saying the other side of the coin is um, an opportunity it provided. It kept gas in my vehicle. It kept mm -hmm. food on my table in the short term. Mm -hmm. while the other doors were closed mm -hmm. so i saw it as a great opportunity and mm -hmm. then the risk you had to be wise in going about doing it you know if you're stepping out use all the necessary precautions, precautions right. so i am just sharing the other side of that comment 